Mrs. Paige Hopkinson, still reporting from the Royal Grace. I'm sure you heard that skirmish between Captain Alex and I, which wasn't really that much of a fight. As I stated before, Captain Alex is very intimidating. I didn't think I had a chance against them. In case you didn't pick it up, Audio Diary, Captain Alex is not only the captain of an airship, but a real pirate crew as well. I think Edgar nearly had a heart attack when Alex announced it. It's terrifying for anyone, don't get me wrong, but when you're born and raised an aristocrat, well, I pity the boy to say the least. He's handsome and all, but clearly a light-hearted child in many respects. Anyways, back to the main point. Alex did rough Edgar up a bit, Edgar clearly being the loser, <clears throat> but you probably caught that part. When Alex asked for our last names, I was terrified. Not for myself, but for Edgar. But in the pinch we were in, we had no choice but to give them our names. I was about to announce my own when Edgar surprisingly spoke up. As soon as he told them he was a Cadwell, I saw Clint's eyes widen and Lewis smile in that slimy way he does. But Alex stayed composed, as though they expected such an answer. Alex announced that they'd figured. When I asked how they knew, they responded that they want some gullible plunkard and that they could smell an aristocrat for miles away. And then Mr. Lewis chirped in with his weaselly little voice, asking if they were going to hold him ransom for money. I was about to say something when Alex stopped me. They turned their heads slowly to look at Lewis, an annoyed glare in their eyes. And then they promptly removed one leather glove and walked over and smacked him right across the cheek. I had to suppress a giggle, honestly. Lewis looked at them with the expression of a dog that had just gotten yelled at. I don't think there's ever been a more satisfying moment for me on this ship. Alex then pointed at Edgar and asked, Are you daft, cow? Look at his clothes, the rags they are now. Don't you think that in a time of crisis, the Cadwells would have made sure to secure their only son? They're clearly dead, elsewise he'd be with the rest of them, and with better clothing. That was when Edgar stood up. I've never seen him more frantic. He asked Alex what they meant by the rest of them. And then, Alex explained that the Lock Loves had aired a report that one of their finest businesses had gone under. I'm sure that meant anything having to deal with Grand Diver Glen. According to Alex, the Lock Loves had also stated that this tragedy had resulted in the loss of their finest business partners, the Cadwells. That the Cadwells had left their comfortable living quarters in Flora to pursue other businesses in the Capella planetary system, which resides next to us. I expected Edgar to burst into tears, but he did not do that. Instead, he grew fierce, so angry, I thought I'd never seen a human in such a state. I thought he'd wrecked the room. He seemed on the verge of breaking the furniture. He howled that it was such a preposterous lie. The Capella planetary system has no interest in steam technology, which is everything the Cadwells stood for. For them, even mentioning the idea of business in that system was basically sacrilege. I don't blame Edgar for the way he acted. At this point, not only had the Lock Loves killed his family, but now they were bent on ruining their reputation. Something he could not allow. Something I would not allow him to, um, allow. Edgar continued to yell other obscenities, and as this went on, Alex just stood there, watching. They were so calm that I feared for what they would do next. Clint seemed as though he were going to make a move, but Alex raised their hand to stop him. Meanwhile, Lewis just rubbed his cheek like the ninny he is. I would apologize for such harsh names, but quite frankly, I don't like that man at all. Ugh, slimy. When Edgar had finally stopped, he just stood there, hunched over and panting. Alex crossed their arms and turned to me. Every time Alex looks at me, I feel so... put in the spotlight, so to speak. I wonder if anyone else gets that feeling. Oh, um... Then, they finally asked me what happened on Flora. What really happened to us in particular. I looked over at Edgar for help, but Alex demanded I speak, so... I told them. I told them how I'd only met Edgar the same day, how I saved him from the massacre brought upon us from the automaton attack, and how when we reached the top, the other aristocrats had seemed to turn on the Cadwells, how they killed them. 
How we waited. And how we... Well, but then the explanation seemed to be mumbled, and Alex had decided that they'd had enough. They asked me what I intended to do. I spoke honestly with my heart when I stuttered that I personally didn't know. I'd only ever wanted to leave Flora. Now I had. Well, I really hadn't other plans. Then they turned to Edgar, who just glared. He said that he wanted revenge. That he'd do anything to see the other aristocrats, the lock gloves in particular, receive justice. There was a quirky smile on the captain's lips at those words. They were words that Alex could get behind, I could tell. And not just because they said it, but because the gleam in their eyes was so bright, I thought someone had lit a candle behind them. I jumped when Clint spoke for the first time since entering the room in the most charming but deadly voice. He asked me, I believe the captain would like to help your friend. If you have no other plans, I would like you to accompany us on a mission of a lifetime. Some mission it would be. We're talking about going against four of the most influential families in, well, to be honest, I don't know how far the power extends anymore. I thought it only to be on Flora, but if they've reached its moons as well, who knows where else they could have great influence in? And yet, I said yes. I agreed to helping these space pirates, to help Edgar, enforce justice on the people who killed all in Grand Iver Glen. I won't lie, I don't have many reasons to stay with this crew. I could tell you it's some heroic sense that they killed everyone in my city and that I wanted to see them beg for mercy. But that's not true. Grand Iver Glen was not the small home my grandfather and I made. It was a city I moved to out of desperation. A city where I only had ricks for company when making friends was, well, hard. No one. Not even the poor in the workers' district liked the idea of associating with a former nomad. And it's not that I'm happy that everyone in Grand Iver Glen is dead. Oh dear me, don't get the wrong idea, audio diary. But I think the real reason I said yes was because, even though these people are space pirates, even though Edgar is technically still an aristocrat, these are good people. These are people I can get behind. Well, except for Lewis. But most of all, what more do I have to do? I wanted to be an engineer for Trav Towers, which would be the most insane idea ever now. I wanted to leave Flora and go to Cecilia, which I am literally doing at the moment. But after? I don't know. As much as I hate to admit it, I live in a universe where no one knows who I am. Where? I died tomorrow. No one would remember me. Goodness. Now the waterworks are going. Good job, Hopkinson. But I can't help it. I'm. I'm so very afraid of being alone. Meow. Yes, Riggs, I know I have you. You fuzzy little six-inch fanged baby. But I've never... Well... When you grow up on Flora as a nomad, you're so busy focusing on surviving, on moving, taking care of those you already know that there is no time to meet new people. Not that there are many new people to meet when you live on your own in the jungle. And I've already spoken on what the people of Grand Avaglen thought of me. So, you see, in all my years of living in the jungle and the city, I only knew one other human, and he's buried on Flora. I'm, I'm, I am alone, but I don't have to be. Space pirates, aristocrats. I think that despite this being the strangest combination I've ever heard of, I can put my name on it. I want to stay with this crew and help Edgar because for once in my life, 
I have people who can say they knew me. People who I think I could one day call my friends. Close friends, even, if I'm lucky. More than friends, if Captain Alex... Focus, Hopkins! <sighs> Regardless, even if I change my mind now, it's too late. I've already agreed. Paige Hopkinson is a part of the Royal Grace's crew and is off to help Edgar Cadwell avenge his loss. Sounds pretty grand, doesn't it? I think it sounds rather bosh, but also sort of brave. I wonder if I can be both of those things at the same time. The only thing I'm worried about, really, is why the pirates are helping Edgar. I think it's to get money in the end, but Alex just seemed so bloodthirsty. There's definitely more to that story, I think. The plan now is still to head to Cecilia. According to Clint, the Darlings have a residence they enjoy visiting there. It's known to be very posh and host rather large parties, but Clint, supposedly, has prior knowledge that the Darlings may be hiding something there. The parties, he assures us, are a cover-up for whatever the Darlings are really stowing away in there. This item could be of great importance to the different families. So, if we get our little paws on it, we might have some leverage over them. Edgar knows of this place, of course, but was never told what the Darlings had there exactly, only that the heads of the household would go there for every important and highly confidential meeting. If it was even hidden from Edgar, it must be of some extreme importance to more than just the Darlings. Clint reached out to some informants and found that there would be a party rather soon. Alex has given us orders that once we arrive on Cecilia, we are to get ready for the real ball. I know this isn't a proper time, but... <laughs> a ball! And an undercover mission. Whilst there, we are to find whatever the Darlings are hiding. If we can't find it, we'll take one of them back with us for interrogation. Simple as that, right? I've never been to a ball. I've never even owned a dress before. I suppose I will need to figure out what to do once we get there. Perhaps I should speak with Alex. Is it improper for me to ask? Or should they ask me? Oh, I can't think properly anymore. Whatever new life Little Ricks and I have found ourselves in, I'm... I'm just so glad to have found it. This episode of Bosch and Brave was written and produced by Ashley Glenn, voiced by Clover Grayson, and brought to you by Blackmore Productions. Like what we do here? Follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. Want to tell us how great we are? Send us a message at blackmoreproductions at gmail.com. Also, we have a website, so go to blackmoreproductions.com to get the latest updates on your favorite podcasts. Until then, we look forward to seeing you at the Darlings Ball next time. <laughs>